Hi everyone. The official Arch Linux Arch install project has just uploaded a fresh bug fix release to the repositories, and I am very curious to see the progress they have made. Let's find out right after this. The September 2022 Arch ISO, which I'll be using in this video, already contains version 2.5.0 of Arch install. So after we boot, we'll need to uninstall it and then install version 2.5.1 in the live ISO session. Let's do this now. Here's the September 2022 Arch ISO, the uh, grub menu that is. So uh, let's select the first entry. Uh, for the default and observe as it comes up. Welcome to Arch Linux. And we should get the uh, shell prompt here. And there it is, kernel 5, 19.6. IPA shows we have a valid IP address for my local private network already configured. If you need to use a wireless connection, just do IWCTL and then uh, type station and then whatever your device is, dev, your wireless card, connect and then SSID, which is the name of your wireless network. And it'll ask you for the password if needed. But we're already configured properly for networking. So what I'm gonna do is exit, uh, IWD and proceed. So um, let's check the uh, target disk configuration. It's dev VDA in this case. And I just want to make sure that we have a valid GPT uh, partition table present and uh, we don't have any partitions predefined. This is very important because if you do have something already here on this disk, it might confuse Arch install, I found in my personal experience. So just checking, looks like we've got a clean disk. Uh, so let's uh, proceed with pacman-syy to synchronize all package databases. So now that that's done, we can install with pacman-s python-pip. And what that allows us to do is to uninstall the existing uh, Arch install Python package uh, in the Arch ISO. So let's do that now with pip uninstall Arch install and hit return. And there it goes. We're gonna uninstall the old version 2.5.0 version. Okay. Um, then what we can do is install a new one with pacman-s arch install. And that's version 2.5.1, which has just been freshly uploaded to the uh, arch repositories. All right, let's run it. Arch install and hit enter or return, depending on your keyboard. Okay, this looks familiar. English, US, correct. Let's check the mirror region for our repositories. And I'm in the United States, so I'll select that. There we go. Locale language and locale encoding look good to me. Stick with the defaults. And for the target device, I'll choose dev VDA, which is 32 gigs in size today. And for disk layout, we'll select wipe all selected drives and use a best effort default partition layout. I'll use ButterFS because I need snapshotting with any rolling Linux release. Uh, default structure is default, yes, for the subvolumes. Uh, ButterFS compression should be enabled, yes, as default. No encryption, that's a separate video one day. Bootloader will do instead of grub, we'll use systemd bootctl. Swap uh, is true, that's for ZRAM swap, not a swap partition. For the uh, host name, I'll just put in Archie one uh, I like to leave the root account disabled for security reasons. I'll add a super user capable user account instead. So I'll just add a user. 
My username is, of course, Steven. Give myself a password. It says it's weak. It's not that weak, but it's good enough for the demonstration today. Yes, I want to be super user. So sudo is yes for user Steven. We'll just confirm and exit. Looking good. And then next for the profile, I'd like to install the Mate desktop today. So we'll choose desktop and Mate. Mate is a great desktop environment. I haven't used it lately, but I think I might check it out again for today. For graphics drivers, we'll use the all open source uh, default installation. Because we're on a KVM, that should be enough. For audio, I like to use the Pipewire system, which is the default, as you can see. For kernels, I like to, in addition to the Linux mainline kernel, I also like to select the Linux long-term support kernel as a backup in case a, a kernel upgrade went sideways or whatever. So for packages, I just like to install the following packages quickly for demonstration purposes. DUF, Firefox, NeoFetch, and TrueType font in Consolata. So those four packages will do the trick for today. There we go. For network configuration, this is Mate, it's a full desktop environment, so we'll need to use Network Manager applet to configure things graphically, right? As it says here, so we'll select that. Use Network Manager. The time zone is not universal time coordinated in my case, but rather US slash Pacific. So I'll choose that. I like to synchronize my, time, my clock with the network time protocol, so that's set to true. Optional repositories like my 32-bit compatibility libraries enabled, so multi-lib is turned on. And we're ready to install. As I see here, we've got the partition proposal, compress equals Z standard. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's rock and roll. I'm going to be editing out much of this process. It takes a while, depending on your network connectivity speed. But uh, with the magic of video editing, this should be done in no time at all. So it's a lot of packages it needs to download and, and configure. So there it is. Let's chirrut into the newly created installation and perform post-installation configuration. Sure. Yes. And yeah, looks like uh, the Chirrut works now. Didn't work before for me. So let's go to Etsy and take a look at the file system table. Configure it. And uh, oh, so I like these sub volumes. That's good. Snapshots for Snapper, Home, Far. But it's got relay time and no compress equals Z standard that I expected. Uh, for my SSD. So, you know, I've done this in pre prior videos to fix this. Um, I'll leave this be for today to keep things short, but uh, this is easily fixable, but looks like they haven't fixed this yet. Okay, let's exit and reboot. And hopefully we've got a, oh, okay. So this is um, the uh, system CTL boot. System deboot, rather. Um, so you've got a choice between the mainline kernel and the LTS kernel, just in case something goes wrong, right? Always good to have. So this is LightDM, Display Manager, and we've got a Mate session available. You can also install other environments as you see fit and choose it from your LightDM menu. Network Manager applet was working. If I had installed uh, like VPN plugins, you could select them here if you need VPN. Uh, the base Arch install doesn't have that. Arch install is very lean installation, allowing you to do configuration um, post-install. So system about Mate, you can see we're running as of the, this video's publication date, 1.26 is the latest. Fantastic desktop environment, GNOME 3 compatible, based rather. Let's fix the screen resolution. So I like to run 1920 by 1080. Let's apply the system wide for all user logins. So that's good. Use the next time someone logs in, this screen resolution. That's good. 1920 by 1080. Well, let's apply it now. Okay, we've got the new screen resolution. That makes the text font size very small. I'll fix that momentarily, guys. Um, let me go to appearance first. 
And I'll choose Blue Submarine, which is a little less glaring for my eyes. And we'll customize it. And um, let's see. Yeah, it's a standard Mate icon. The set is fine. The pointer, I'll turn it black and make it quite a bit larger so you guys can see my mouse pointer. Make it a little easier to see if you're on a cell phone or something. For the uh, background, this is a nice one. We'll, we'll choose that. Let's make the font size a little bigger so you guys can read what I'm doing here. Up it up two notches, two point sizes for application, document font, uh, desktop font. Also do the window title font up by two. And the fixed width, like a terminal font, uh, I've got the Inconsolata true type font installed. So let me choose Inconsolata uh, Medium, I think it's called. Let me look for that. A lot of Inconsolata fonts here. It's a great true type font for uh, text files and things. There is Medium. All right, let's make this a whole bunch bigger. Let's make it uh, size 14. There we go. Subpixel smoothing is already enabled. It's a very good choice. Okay, we can close this. So as you can see here, uh, we've got also power management that we can disable for demo. Yeah, this all looks pretty standard Mate uh, control center configuration items to me. Let me turn off screensaver just in case. since this is a kind of a demo kiosk of sorts. All right, so this is the control center. Let's go ahead and close that. We're done with it now. And uh, let's go to applications. So Arch install just does a base, basic installation. Uh, doesn't include much out of the box. So it's up to you to configure. Uh, you've got Firefox here, so you can go to the Arch Wiki and that will help you with, with what you need to do. So as you can see, very little is pre-configured. It's a very light installation of Mate. Just the bare essentials to get you going. The Mate terminal, let me drag the shortcut here to the top bar so we can uh, quickly launch the terminal. So this is uh, based on Nautilus, the file manager. I think it's pronounced Kaha version 1.26.1, it's very capable. You'll need additional plugin packages, very easy to do for Samba shares, etc., etc. But yeah, this is very nice and clean interface. All right, let's launch the terminal. Whoops, looks like we have basically invisible fonts, visible text, let's fix this with editing the profile default. Under colors, instead of the system theme, I'm just gonna select, oh, I don't know, white on black. That's best for my eyes. Your eyes may be different. Bear with me, please. Uh, and the uh, custom palette will be Tango. For scrolling, we'll turn off the scroll bar, we'll disable it, and we'll make the scroll back unlimited. Depends how much memory you have, right? Okay, that's legible now. I can see what it says. Steven at Archie-1. All right, let's make this font a little bigger, zoom in a little bit, and then make it full screen. So DUF shows how much um, the mounts are being used. So this is a five gig as installed system, very light. Arch install, like I said earlier, does not install anything other than the bare essentials to get you going. Five gigs, not bad, very light. All right, then moving on, let's double check the mount options for our Butterfest file system. And as you can see, we've got relay time. For an SSD, I would recommend no access time or no A time. And also compress equals the standard to keep those um, the wear down on your SSD. But we're not on an SSD here, we're on a virtual machine, so we'll continue. And here's NeoFetch. So we're running on the mainline kernel. We've got the latest Mate, window manager's MetaCity, uh, also called Marco. Uh, and uh, we've got only 537 megabytes 
of memory consumed, which is a very light system indeed. We won't have much time to talk about Mate itself in this video, I just want to uh, demonstrate Arch install. So there you go. Okay, not bad at all. Everything is easily fixable, and we now have a base Arch Mate installation that we can continue to customize and make our own. I'm guessing this version will be included in the official October 2022 Arch ISO, and will make Arch Linux much more readily accessible to a wider audience. Thanks so much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please abuse the like button as hard as you can, and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care and have lots of fun.